Hi, my name is John Buse. I'm at the University of North Carolina and I've been asked by IDOC to address the issue of pancreatitis in association with GLP-1-based therapies. Uh, as you undoubtedly know, uh, GLP-1 is a hormone produced by the intestinal tract. Um, and there are now a variety of drug therapies that, uh, that work in the GLP-1 system to lower glucose um, and uh, promote insulin secretion, reduce glucagon production. So they have relatively broad-based effects. Uh, the two therapies that are available now are exenatide, an injectable product administered twice a day, which was derived originally from the Gila monster, uh, um, and it's uh, therefore an animal product. Uh, the second technique is something called citagliptin, which is a DPP-4 inhibitor. It blocks the body's own uh, breakdown of its, its own production of GLP-1 uh, and therefore increases GLP-1 levels about twofold. Exenatide, on the other hand, increases GLP-1 levels about tenfold. Um, and now under review at the Food and Drug Administration is a human GLP-1 analog uh, that is long-acting called liraglutide, um, and it likewise increases the GLP-1 uh, levels uh, uh, many-fold, uh, but in a way that's uh, more consistently elevated over time. So pancreatitis was initially reported with exenatide, um, and subsequently there have been much rarer reports with the DPP-4 inhibitors, um, and now in the clinical trial program, pancreatitis has been uh, reported with liraglutide. Many people are concerned that these drugs seem to cause pancreatitis. Um, the best evidence, however, is that pancreatitis is increased about two to three-fold in patients with diabetes independent of, uh, of their drug therapy. Um, so patients with diabetes on no drug therapy, patients with diabetes on, let's say, metformin. Um, so independent of any drug therapy, pancreatitis is increased uh, in the setting of diabetes. Part of that increase in the setting of diabetes is related to the fact that people with diabetes have more risk factors for pancreatitis. So they're more likely to be hypertriglyceridemic and more likely to be overweight, uh, among other things. So is there excess risk associated with these GLP-1-based therapies? That's where the, you know, the, the information is much less clear. In some uh, database kind of studies where they look at the incidence rate of pancreatitis in uh, patients treated with exenatide versus other agents, there does not seem to be any difference. Do those studies exclude the possibility that these therapies are associated with pancreatitis? No, but they certainly make it likely that if there is a specific problem of GLP-1 associated therapies promoting pancreatitis, it's quite rare uh, because it's not picked up in those database kinds of studies. So in my practice, what I tell patients is that when you go on to a GLP-1-based therapy, particularly exenatide or one of these newer agents, well, let's say liraglutide, um, less of an issue with the DPP-4 inhibitors, um, that you uh, are likely to experience nausea. Um, and that that nausea is a fairly common side effect, it occurs in about 30 to 50 percent of patients treated with uh, these agents at some point in time. Uh, if you have nausea that lasts for a few hours and then goes away before the next dose, that's pretty unlikely to be pancreatitis. If you have nausea that's bad, uh, you know, it's associated with vomiting and it persists for many hours, uh, you know, from dose to dose, uh, then that's something that certainly would be more concerned about and certainly would make me as a patient uh, not take the drug until I spoke to a healthcare professional to try and sort all this out. I think what's happened in the past, frankly, is that people develop nausea and vomiting on uh, these GLP-1-based therapies. They went to an emergency room. Uh, you know, in the evaluation of the nausea, they draw an amylase level. It's found to be twofold elevated. Uh, the diagnosis of pancreatitis is made, um, when in fact that there really isn't pancreatitis. What there is is an elevation of amylase in the setting of nausea, which is a side effect of uh, of these GLP-1-based therapies. 
So uh, I don't think it's a big issue. It's something that we need to be aware of, and certainly we need to counsel patients that if they have persistent nausea and vomiting, uh, particularly if it's associated with abdominal pain and or fever uh, or other features of pancreatitis, that they need to stop the drug and get evaluated uh, pronto because pancreatitis can be a very serious illness. Uh, so for iDoc, this has been John Buse. Thank you very much.